Um, sorry, actually, I'll ask Marco if he'll start, just because we never know how to start no, this thing. And once we get rolling, it's always fun, because we do have a fire, and it's a good space. And um, Marco, nice to have you back. Yeah, no, thanks, Sir Peter. It's good to be back. I spent um, a good um, couple of weeks on the road and traveling around quite a bit. It's always good to get back to the bush after some hectic time in the big city and uh, out on the tar. So it's good to be back, good to be back with the team. Um, new face when I got over here, Matteo. Um, he's uh, fitting great, so it's good to meet him. But uh, just uh, all in all, it's always nice driving um, in the gates at um, Gary Gate and uh, coming back into Juma and uh, seeing everybody and being back in the bush. So, oh, thanks, man. It's good to be back. So I just had a bit of a chuckle there because um, just as we uh, about to go live, uh, Matteo has to give us a, a countdown and he's... Uh, screeching from the director's uh, seat over there, so it's always an entertaining way to start our chat. But um, welcome to our fireside chat. It's um, Sunday evening, um, just after 7 p.m. Central African time, and we are here around the fire, just uh, relaxing, having a chat. Peter and myself, and Matteo will come and uh, join us in a bit. But it's been, um, well, I, I think, uh, Peter, you'd be the best uh, to talk about the week. I only got back on Thursday, so there's been quite a bit of activity around. Yeah, it's been good. Um, <laughs> you know, one of the things often for me, it's, it's almost strange to remember what I saw on the drive in the morning, never mind five, six days ago. Um, so the timeline of it can sometimes get a bit confusing when you're live out there. I, I tend to forget some of the things when you sit down later on. But we've had, in, in general, an incredible week with, uh, with uh, first and foremost, with, with Wonky. Uh, the elephant has been around a lot. I mean, you've seen some of it since you've been back. Um, and also just lots of, of great elephant viewing. We've had fantastic leopard this morning. Buffalo, we had that massive big herd with, um, with Rex and, and, and Alex on drive. So it, it's been very good, typical Salby Sands winter game viewing. Um, I've had an incredibly interesting week or two as well from a personal point of view. So yeah, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been good. Um, with um, the, that Buffalo herd, because that was on the day that I just arrived back, um, the, they were down at uh, the, the Gowrie Pan, weren't they? At Sydney's Dam. At Sydney's yeah. Dam, okay. Sydney's Dam. No, it's just uh, the reason I ask is with um, a big herd like that moving through the area, and it's been a question that a lot of people have been um, sending through is uh, with regards to the water situation in the reserve and the water holes. And just a big herd like that's got to surely put a, a quite a bit of pressure on um, the water sources that are available for us out here or for the wildlife. Yeah, big time. Eh? When we were talking about. Um I'm very sorry, but in the end we are all here and it is all live. Matteo, do you mind just turning the, the, the uh, speaker down a little bit? I can hear myself talking. And uh, it's a bit weird, but Matteo is sitting literally over there and Alex is just behind the camera over there. So um, it just makes it much easier. Thank you, Matteo. And um, yeah, it's, it's, we were talking about it the other night actually was over at um, Paul Kruger's camp and, and a bit of a story about it, but there was a guy there from Texas who farms a lot of cattle and we were talking about how much water a cow can drink when he's very thirsty and so on. But even if you just take let's say a very small amount, those buffalo probably drink um, in a rough calculation 20-25 liters of water per buffalo a bit more than that but let's just keep it low down and you're talking about uh, you know, 2,000 buffalo you know, that's uh, 5,000, 10,000, well, 5,000 liters a day about, yeah. I think yeah, I no, no, yeah. it's, a, it's a large amount and not only that, the, the impact it actually has on the um, the water hole itself uh, churning up all that mud and you often see the animals coming down to the water holes afterwards and I'm sure a lot of um, a lot of our viewers out there um, have um, uh, actually witnessed that as soon as a big herd comes down to the water hole here with the cameras um, afterwards it's pretty much just sludge and then maybe some water buck come down some impala come down they just have a bit of a sniff around and they decide to head off somewhere else and see if they can find some fresher water um, and that's uh, I think um, uh, the best example of, of uh, animals testing and being, I wouldn't say fussy, but being clever enough to get the best is definitely the elephants and Wonky has been a prime example <laughs> over the last couple of weeks. Just with, uh, as soon as they start pumping water into the pan, <coughs> I'm sure he hears it, so, uh, he's down there and he's got his trunk right over the pipe, um, just sucking up the fresh water as it comes out and definitely taking advantage of all the, the, fresh, um, the fresh water coming to the pan. Yeah. yeah, it's been it's been interesting. I mean, and, and, and it's, uh, even even other animals, uh, when the water's coming out, you notice impala and things all standing around there. Uh, maybe some of you don't don't know, but that that pan is pumped, and um, at the moment there's just quite a lot of need for other water around the camp. I think, which is why it's not pumped as regularly. Um, but quite often, if you look at from the the, the ones sort of the lower down ang angle where you see the water, you'll see a lot of animals congregating around the little spot, 
and obviously that's because it's fresh water so it's um, very popular with them but um, also the wart soles itself Marco just to come back to what you were saying with big herds of animals now you know if you have two two and a half thousand buffalo coming to drink they literally sort of empty out the dam a little bit you know when they walk away the dam has got less water in by, by a, a large margin but also elephants and just everything everything from the bird life to, to everything else obviously the more animals drinking from a water hole because there's less other water available you know a dove drinks a couple of teaspoons worth of water but there's a couple of thousand doves probably a day that, that drinks there so it, uh, it, it puts a bit of strain on it but it's, it's normal it's winter um, 50 or 100 years ago there would not even have been water in this specific area during winter so um, the fact that there is water means there can be more animals around and, and they can utilize the, the habitat which is in good shape so yeah no and it's um, and it's actually a good uh, it's a good thing to remember um, <coughs> Just uh, speaking on the side of the animals are going to be coming to the water holes, and it's uh, definitely a, a prime location to spot game. <coughs> you, um, um, as as a person that would come out visiting um, Africa, you know, people always ask, uh, Peter, what is the best time of the year to come to South Africa to go on a safari? And it's not really an easy question, but <laughs> on the game viewing side of it, um, just based on the subject that we're talking about now. Um, short supply of water it's going to be an area where animals congregate um, so a good chance uh, of spotting game out over there so on the mammal side of it it is um, most certainly a, a good time of the year to to come out in the drier months um, but then again summer offers a total different experience doesn't mm. it big time actually Marcus just a, a very interesting thought I had on, on when you asked that question because it is a question that's typically asked by everything from from guests and tourists to to friends that you give advice on when to go on safari and so on um, and, and speaking of questions, we are going to get to some of the questions that came through from the viewers. We spoke about enough food around just now. I was thinking about someone asking about biltong and what kind of meat gets eaten out, and, uh, out here and so on. But just quickly to get back to that, uh, the best time of year really is any time of the year. To come out and, and, and they, there's never a bad time to go on, on a safari, to use the traditional term, or to go and experience the bush. That, that really is something that we've proven now by, by, by going out every day. And, and any guide, anyone that goes on a lot of safaris will tell you that. And I think one of the great things with, with Wild Earth, and, and we, we're learning more about this, is, is the fact that many of you, many of you sitting around the fire with us tonight, and you're busy learning to experience this space with us, we'll, get, uh, we'll still get a lot more um, sort of uh, used to this space like we have on the vehicle. But the benefit is that you can come out any time of the year. We've had people now that have been on more game drives probably than a lot of guides. Um, Absolutely. People that have been with us from the first day, uh, that interact with us via questions. A lot of people that don't maybe interact, but they come and drive often. So in terms of the experience that, that this is providing now, apart from being live, which obviously makes it uh, not only unique, but, but very real time and, and very personal, which is something I've learned about a lot the last couple of weeks with, with the personal trust relationship with you, um, but is the fact that people can come any time of the year for, for, for what we do. So. Yeah. Um, at least they don't have to worry about coming at the right time of year, yeah, or absolutely. even bringing the right clothes. You know, sure. if it's if it's uh, if it's a bit cold, they go close their window and, and they make, make a, a cup, cup of coffee. Tea. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, yeah. and if you are coming, actually, come as many times as you can. That would be the best solution. <laughs> but if you can't, uh, that's the best part about Wild Earth that you can join us, and you can actually get an idea of what it is like at the various seasons and the different times of the years. Uh, there's so many different things to see, to view, to experience, and um, uh, uh, as um, Peter or Rex or myself take you out there and uh, uh, you can see that through our eyes and uh, our senses um, uh, you can learn a lot about uh, what you would uh, what you enjoy the most about uh, being out in the bush and what time of the year is best for you it is um, in the luxury of your chair back at home so that is a that is a great opportunity to be able to share that with everybody and uh, like you said the, um, our viewers do get the chance to experience the bush in um, so many different ways and um, a lot more than like you said, guides. Yeah, more than uh, some of you have been on more games with Wild Earth than I've been. And I've been on a, on a fair amount of them. So, <laughs> sorry, I was just thinking about a whole bunch of things that I, I don't even want to open that, <laughs> that door now. I've, I've really been through a very interesting stage, Mark. I've told you maybe later tonight we'll sit around the fire for a while longer and, and talk about some of it. But, but there really has been some uh, breathtaking sociological discoveries for me almost in, in the last while in terms of, of, uh, of how people share this with us and, and, and we with you. But uh, like I said, that's... Uh, conversation that can probably take us through to sunrise. Uh, one night I actually did stay up through sunrise thinking about it. And then, um, So let's maybe get back to a couple of questions. Yeah. Like I said, there were one or two almost humorous ones that I quite enjoyed. And uh, forgive me if I ask, if I forget the names, I wrote them down, yeah? 